This is the 14th video in the video series of Orbital Mechanics of Python. This one, I'm going to talk about stop conditions. So as I mentioned in the previous video, um, that kind of goes well with uh, low thrust and for aerodynamic drag, is when you want to stop a propagation where some parameter has been reached. So say for aerodynamic drag, you're considered deorbited at Earth orbit if you're at 100 kilometers. So if that happens, to so stop the propagation, just kind of end it. It's like, all right, this, the spacecraft is done. Or if you're trying to raise your orbit, say, I want to raise my orbit by 10 kilometers. Um, once the 10 kilometer hits, the stop condition will tell the propagator to stop propagating, and then you're done. Um, but altitude isn't the only thing. You could have mass, you could have orbital energy. You can have literally whatever you want that you calculate to have the trigger just say, if this happens, stop the propagation. And I used to, I used to have it as a separate class. It was a stop condition class. That's why I had it in the previous videos before. But as I was going to make this video, I kind of just thought about it. And in my head, the way that I read it is more of a better way for what I like to do. But I mean, they both work. They're both totally fine. Um, so I'll show you both. And I guess you can kind of run with whatever, whichever one you want. Um, so there's a lot of things to change. I'll just go to the, the main script first. Um, actually, no, I'll just get to the orbit propagator first. So, full screen. Um, what you want to do, uh, first thing is you want to pass in SC, so stop condition. That's just going to be, um, a dictionary that you're going to pass in that has all the stop conditions that you want. And then as default, it's just empty. Um, so that's that. And then, oh, and another thing that I changed because of the self.step variable, um, First of all, I change this to zero, and I'll show you why. Um, but then I also, I initialize the altitude array here instead of uh, calculating it after all the propagation is done. I'll show you why that is as well. And then I added a plus one to all of these. You want to add a plus one to all of these. This plus one was already here, um, but to these specifically. And I'll explain why I did that. And then since you're defining the alt here as zeros, you want to go ahead and define the initial condition as well. Which is just the same as before, just the norm of your radius vector, or radial vector, minus whatever center body radius you're at. And I'm going to show before how I do it in the init function, how it's used in the propagate orbit function. Hide this. So in this one, where previously in this while loop is going to be, if a solver is successful and you haven't reached the all amount of steps, um, keep going with the integration. But I also added successful steps and then if all the stop conditions say to keep going is basically what that's saying um so if if everything is true then you go forth if any of them are false because it's and and um if any of them are false everything will be false and you get out of the loop um extract the values oh and i move step plus equals one to here because we need the altitude at the kind of current step that's going on so i couldn't have the step be after um, that's just something I changed for this. And again, I'll show you the old version of the way I had it where everything more so stayed more the same. You just have this other class, but I want to do this one for now because I like, I like this way better. Um, so then you calculate the altitude at your given step and then you norm. And the reason you have to do this kind of first is because you're calling in the previous step in, or in the step that just happened. Um, I guess right after you propagate, um, check if the stop condition was met. So there's kind of just like that one offset in order to go into the next step. That may have been a little bit fuzzy. Uh, let me know if it was, but um, I can explain it more if you need to. But um, that's kind of what's going on here. And then you just, same as always, just calculate um, the norm of your radial vector minus the radius and add that into the altitude um, array. And then at the end, just make sure you also cut it off at whatever step it was cut off. Um, just like all the other ones. Um, yeah, so that's it for the propagate orbit. So as far as what I did in the init function, which is the most important. Um, so this SC dictionary that you pass in, uh, first thing I do is just store it. Um, just store it right here as an internal variable, so you always have it. Um, and then this map, kind of this map dictionary is basically... So this dictionary, what you're going to pass in is say... Um, you have a minimum altitude. So if you hit 300 kilometers, you're going to stop. And you're passing in min alt and then 300. So what this is going to do is it's saying um, it kind of maps a string to a function. So for this min alt, say you want to do minimum altitude, check min alt. So this function, check min alt, all it does is if your altitude at your current step is less than what you pass at the minimum altitude, you reach minimum altitude, return false, so that stops propagation. 
So that's what that, all it's doing is just mapping a string to a function. Th that's all that this is doing. And I'll show you how you use it in just this other line. Um, so, and then this stop condition functions is that every step, as it was done in propagate orbit, at every step, you're going to check if the stop conditions are met and, and if you're okay to proceed or not. And how you're going to do that is you're going to iterate through a list of functions. And you can do this in Python. I think it's... I think you can do it in other languages, but it's kind of a Python thing to do to make a list of functions and then call a list of functions. Um, Python just gives you the liberty of doing that. And it might be possible in other languages. I'm not sure, but you can definitely do it here. And I take advantage of it. Um, so you're going to initialize this list by always checking if you do orbit. Because if you do orbit, you do orbit. Like You don't want to have to pass in the value every time because... Well, at Earth, if you're at 100 kilometers, that's considered deorbited. So just call it good there. Um, and you can change this value um, whenever you want. But So you're always going to check if you deorbit. But say if you're at an asteroid, you're only deorbited if you're at the surface. So you can add that parameter as well. And I'll show you how I did it in planetary data uh, file. Okay, so once you initialize this list that just has this value where you're always going to check if you deorbit... Um, so for key and self stop conditions, dick dot keys, dick that's in dictionary. So um, what you can do is see you have a this arbitrary dictionary just says like min alt um, one hundred, and then you say max alt uh, one thousand. So what this keys so a dot keys just returns you a list of strings of the keys. So this is key and value key value pairs so i think if you do is it values yeah it returns you a list of whatever values you had um oh you just i guess make sure it doesn't matter what order you pass them in i think it does it alphabetically um or whatever algorithm it does if it has because you can also do um say you have one equals yes and then if you have A, you can have, so you can have a lot of different data types. That's also a very Python thing. You can just mix up data types however you want. Um, but they're not going to be alphabetical. So, but they will be in the same. If you do keys and values, it will be in the same. But anyways, um, what I want to get from that is that when I say for key and self dot stop conditions dictionary dot keys, um, each key. So you're going to get max alt, min alt, and then whatever else you want in there. I only implemented these for now, but you can implement literally anything you want. Um, so you're going to append to this, that's this list, uh, whatever keys you pass in, you're going to append um, whatever function that maps to. So in this, in this first example, you have minalt and you want it 300. So what that will do is you have, um, since one of the keys in those dictionaries is minalt, it's going to get minalt, and then from this, it's going to append to this list this function so every time that this is called here it's going to check if the minimum altitude has been reached um there's kind of a lot of like dictionary stuff going on there but um it's kind of a more efficient way in my opinion than what i did before which i'll show you um but that's just what's happening here so you're going to fill in the rest of the stop conditions you're going to add the rest of the methods inside the class of the stop conditions inside of this list so each time step it will check if those have been met or not um so that's what's happening there. And just these uh, kind of four commands are what you're going to add in order to add the stop condition. And then as far as these functions, um, first of all, check the orbit. It's basically if self.alt, so if the altitude of your current time step is less than deorbit altitude, it's deorbited, uh, and I print out a statement and then return false. And if this is not true, you can return true. One thing worth mentioning is um, I could also say else return true, and they'd be literally exactly the same, but I just decided not to use else because, I don't know, less writing, I guess. Because um, this is true, it's going to return, and it's never going to call this line. So if you return, you get out of a function, so it's never going to call that. And then, so right now I have implemented max alt and min alt. Uh, max altitude, minimum altitude, pretty self-explanatory. And then this, uh, the function you call here is self.check stop conditions. So that's this function here. Um, and what you do, so for each stop condition, so for SC stop condition and self.stop condition functions, which you define here, so for each function in this list, call it. So th this will return either true or false. So if it's not if it's not false, which means if it's true, 
then some stop condition has been reached, return false. And when you return false, you get out of this loop, so you stop propagating, and then you cut off all your arrays at whatever time step you stop propagating. So that's going on. Um, it may get a little, I guess, confusing with all the booleans going around here. Um, so just let me know if it is. Uh, I can, you know, give a little bit more explanation as to what's going on. Kind of the mapping is what's going on, but there's a lot of booleans. But um, I think, I mean, at least in my mind, I don't know. If you think through it, they kind of all make sense. But please let me know if it doesn't. Um, so for each one of the stop conditions, if one of them returns false, return false. The stop condition has been reached. So if you never return false, that means no stop condition was reached and return true. So then this will return true. And then you keep going with the propagation as before, as if nothing happened. You're just checking if some stop condition has been reached. Yeah, that's kind of a lot to explain there. But um, yeah, again, let me know if I need any more explanation on that. Because I actually just wrote this today when I was making this video. I kind of was just thinking about how can I do this better. Um, so to cover what I did before, which also worked when I had the stop condition as a separate class. Um, here's a stop condition class um, where you initially pass in uh, null equals false. So if there was going to be no other stop conditions other than checking if you've um, crashed, basically, I used to have it if you've crashed. If no other conditions, check for crash. Um, just do that. Um, and then for each uh, kind of um, stop condition that you would have, you would pass in true or false. So minimum altitude, maximum altitude. SOI, sphere of influence. So I use that one for if you're leaving Earth and going to the moon, at some point you're going to enter the moon's uh, sphere of influence. So just trigger that when that happens. And then min mass. So if you only want to use a certain amount of mass um, when you're thrusting. And then conditions equals conditions. So I still passed in the um, dictionary. And then CV so I would pass in the whatever central body radius was going on. Um, as a default, it was Earth. The problem that I had with this was. Well, I actually didn't have any problems. It worked just fine. I just, I really wasn't a fan of how many if statements I had. I'm really not into, I try to kind of do as little if statements as possible, but obviously I was getting a lot here. If you're passing in max out, set self up max out to be whatever it is, blah, 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 all of those. And then what I did was in the check, um, I had a method called check, which was used in propagate orbit. Um, where I use this self dot stop condition, so I would pass it in, and then it would store the stop condition instance as a variable, and you check, and you'd pass in a data dictionary. Um, so I didn't like this because um, you you're creating a new um, variable basically, and you're passing into this function every time, and then here's two more if statements. So if you're checking for a new sphere of influence, add it to the data dictionary, and then pass it in. So I just kind of just didn't like that. Um, I had this as well, you had to initialize that. Um, yeah, so I just kind of thought th there has to be a better way, at least in my mind, um, a way that makes more sense. And then when you check, you have to initialize all these to true. And then if something is false, flag it as false. And then at the end, return all these ands. So if any of these are false, then you return false because these are all ands on top of each other. Um, yeah, it's just the way I had it before. I just didn't like it as much and wanted to redo it. And I feel like this is a more efficient way of doing it, um, especially because I just really don't like having a bunch of if statements. Yep. So I think I can just move on to this now. And I already ran this, so I know it's going to work. But basically what's happening here is I have just this initial orbit that I had with uh, 800 kilometers. Um, it's basically circular. Oh, it is circular. I put 0.0, .0 for the eccentricity. And then I'm just going to run it and show you what this looks like. Where I had the minimum altitude be 300 kilometers. And I'm thrusting in the negative direction. So that means um, I'm trying to deorbit. So as you would expect, you get down here and it just cuts off at 300, which might have a better view in another one of these. As you'd expect, you're just decreasing in altitude each time you go around, plotting the cos. Get to the stop condition when that happens. This is all pretty much the same thing as before. I just wanted to show you how to implement this. Oh, actually, yeah, one thing that was interesting about this, so apogee perigee uh, plot, you kind of, so when these meet, this means that the eccentricity is zero because your apogee and perigee are equal. So you're kind of just bouncing back and forth when you're deorbiting from a circular orbit, um, which is going to be different from elliptical orbit. So I guess we'll just do that. Say this is like uh, 0 0.2. I hope this doesn't crash into the Earth. 
Yep. That's what I thought. It's just bad initial conditions. Let me let me do like a zero point one. And see what that looks like. Okay. These are not the conditions that I want. Let's do like uh, 1500 minimum altitude of 200 I'm just doing this for um, kind of showing six because the apogee perigee is going to be different I mean this is what you'd expect you're oscillating a lot same thing as you'd expect but then these other plots are going to look or this plot should look the same but the apogee perigee should look a bit different yeah it's all the same yeah, so they're, they're not going to be meeting like they did if you start a circular orbit, basically, is what I wanted to show there. So that's pretty much it for this video. I feel like I covered it pretty well. But again, just let me know if all the Booleans and stuff is a little bit confusing and I can do a better job of explaining. Um, and next video, I'm actually going to start doing NASA Spice Files. I said that for three videos, but now I'm actually going to do it. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. And as I said again, let me know if everything's too fast, too slow with all this stuff that I was explaining. Yeah, thank you for watching.